Have you heard the latest scoop on Cat Williams? And career. You won't believe some of this stuff. They arrested me so much, as soon as I see the police, my body just automatically assumes the position. Micah Cat Williams was born September 2nd, 1971 in Cincinnati and raised in Dayton, Ohio. Picture this, a kid growing up in a strict Jehovah's Witness family. But Cat wasn't your average Joe. Rumor has it that the dude read like a pro at three and got into college at seven. Sounds wild, right? We can't say for sure, but that's his claim. And get this, at five, he's out there performing in front of thousands. Talk about being born for the spotlight. Five years old, I was in front of five, ten thousand people giving a performance. But here's the real tea. Cat didn't want that cookie cutter life. Nope, his folks weren't feeling his vibe, though. Drama alert, at 13, after some beef with his dad, Cat bounces to Florida. Homeless, hustling with odd jobs, and still hitting the books. The kid was on a mission, but guess what? He only did one comedy show in Florida, just one. You, at 13, you not only look like, okay, mom, I'm moving out. You moved from Ohio to Florida. You weren't afraid? I mean, you like- Don't say I wasn't afraid. There's no such thing as a human being of not being afraid. So, what do you think? Was Cat destined for fame, or was it all just a wild ride of chance? And how did he go from a homeless teen in Florida to a comedy legend? Stay tuned, because this story's got more twists than a roller coaster. Check this out. Back in the day, like in the 90s, Cat Williams was all over the map, literally. Dude was on a wild ride, growing up, hustling for jobs, and guess what? He got bitten by the comedy bug. He wasn't just chilling, he was studying the comedy legends, trying to crack the code. He hit up clubs, throwing jokes left and right, figuring out how to make folks from all walks of life crack up. Then, bam, he lands in California, ready to stir things up. Now, skip to the real game changer, Friday After Next. Yeah, he had a gig on NYPD Blue, but come on, Friday After Next was where he really lived a few. 2002, the year Cat Williams became Money Mike, standing shoulder to shoulder with legends like Ice Cube and Mike F. That role, iconic, man. But wait, there's more. Cat Williams wasn't just any funny guy. He was the king of laughs on Wild and Out. First showed up in 2005, season one. And man, did he own it. The team, they were good. But Cat, he was on another level. Before he was rocking it on Wild and Out, Guess where Williams and Nick Cannon cross paths? In the music video for Gigolo. That's right, Williams was in there, making a cameo that was straight fire. And let's not forget 2005, when Williams lent his voice to a pimp named Slickback in the Boondocks. That character only showed up in three episodes, but every single time, he stole the show. Pure gold, every word he said. Hold up, Slickback. No, that's a pimp named Slickback. That's what I said, Slickback. No, no, it's a pimp named Slickback. Like a tribe called Quest, you say the whole thing. A pimp named Slickback. It can't be called your Slickback for sure. No, nigga, I'm a pimp named Slickback. Check it out, in 2006, Cat Williams blasted onto the HBO scene with his first ever stand-up special, The Pimp Chronicles Part 1. This dude was all about that self-made hustle, financing his own laugh riot. Talk about boss moves. Fast forward to 2007 and Cat's dropping American Hustle, a comedy special that had folks rolling in the aisles. Fans still 
can't stop yapping about how that intro set was straight fire. Possibly the slickest he's ever done. But girl, it ain't all laughs and applause. Cats had his share of run-ins with the law. First time, LAX, where they found a stolen gun in his briefcase. Fast forward to 2012, and this cat's getting cuffed like it's going out of style. Five times in two months. Hot by now. In 2012, after a scuffle in Seattle, Cat's like, I'm out. Comedy's done for me. But hold up. Just a few days later, he flips the script saying he ain't going nowhere. Just feeling a bit salty about how Seattle treated him, that's all. 2014, and things get Hollywood crazy. Cat and the infamous Suge Knight get tagged for jacking a camera from some celeb paparazzo. Like straight up movie script stuff. 2018 was wild. Cats on B103 throwing shade like it's sunny in July. He goes in on Tiffany Haddish and Kevin Hart and even roast host Wanda Smith live. She tries to crack wise about his legal drama and Cat claps back. No old bar. This interview, pure gold if you're into celebrity beef and unfiltered sass. Y'all gather around because what I'm about to spill is the hottest tea straight from Tinseltown. We're talking about the one and only Cat Williams, the comedy king who's been stirring up the Hollywood pot like nobody's business. First off, let's throw it back to 2018 when Cat snatched his first big time award, a shiny primetime Emmy. He bagged this award for his killer role as Willie in Atlanta. But hold up, that's just the appetizer in this piece of juicy gossip. Fast forward to January 3rd, 2024, and boom! Shannon Sharp drops this bombshell of an interview with Kat that's got over 40 million views. We're talking nearly three hours of unfiltered, explosive Cat Williams, serving up major life and career moments like it's Thanksgiving dinner. But here's where it gets really spicy. Kat goes full savage mode, calling out big names left and right. He throws shade at Steve Harvey, accusing him of jacking the whole vibe of Mark Curry's sitcom hanging with Mr. Cooper for the Steve Harvey show. And get this, he straight up says Harvey can't come it as a movie star because he's got no range and looks like Mr. Potato Head. Ouch, talk about a burn. And Cat is not done yet. He put Cedric the Entertainer on blast. Claiming said swiped one of his jokes word for word from back in the day. We're talking about a gag Cat dropped on BET's Comic View in the 90s. Like, can you even imagine the audacity? But wait, there's more. Cat reignites his beef with Kevin Hart, calling him an industry plan. He's all like, Kevin's success ain't real because he had movie deals lined up before he even hit up L.A. And he throws this shade. No one in Hollywood remembers a sold-out Kevin Hart show. That's some serious tea right there. In 15 years in Hollywood, no one in Hollywood has a memory of going to a sold-out Kevin Hart show. There being a line for him ever getting a standing ovation at any well, comedy club. He already had his deals when he got here. Have we heard of a comedian that came to L.A. and in his first year in L.A. he had his own sitcom on network television and had his own movie called Soul Plane that he was leading? No, we've never heard of that before that person or since that person. What do you think a plan? Ted doesn't stop at throwing shade. He gets real about his own struggles, talking about his jokes getting lifted over the years, the Illuminati, wild ditty parties, and why he chooses to fund his own projects. He's lighting up the entertainment world, and you best believe folks he name dropped are scrambling to clear their names. But check this Cat's got a heart too. He gets all kinds of emotions about stars like Taraji P. Henson, who got real about being underpaid in Hollywood. Story the saddest thing ever, and he's not holding back on his feelings about how he treats celebs like Kanye West, who's battling mental health issues. Now, let's talk family because Pat's got a big one. He married Kadira Lopez, and together they had a son, Micah Jr. But Cat, being the stand up guy he is, didn't stop there. He adopted Kadira's seven other kids to save them from foster care and added two more to the mix. That's ten kids, y'all. When Shannon asked him why, Cat said he's been trying to be God's friend his whole life. Talk about a big heart.